What's up, y'all? It's the MMA analyst. Uh, damn. Um, I'm not. I'm not surprised Kimbo lost this fight. I mean, that's obviously what I'm gonna talk about first. This is my review for the uh, Elite XC Heat uh, Saturday Night Fights Three. Again, not a, not surprised that Kimbo lost this fight. Um, the minute I found out he was fighting Seth Petrozelli. I said to myself, okay, let's take a look. He's a younger, somewhat intelligent fighter who doesn't just swing for the fences. He's not 45. He He's not over the hill. There's a difference, you know what I mean? Um, he He's not... A tailor-made opponent for Kimbo. There are tailor-made opponents for Kimbo. Josh Thompson was supposed to be one. And kind of ended up being one. Um, Tank Abbott. Tailor-made. It's like an older version of Kimbo. Um, Bo Cantrell. Tailor-made. Ken Shamrock. Tailor-made. You know. Uh, those are guys that can't, that 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 Tank Sorry, that uh, that Kimbo will beat all day, every time. There are a few of them in the game. And he was going to beat another one, which was, you know, like I said, Ken Shamrock. Ken Shamrock got injured, whatever, whatnot. I don't know what you're doing wrestling or, you know, getting headbutt um, the same day of the fight. What are you doing? But that's beside the point. And then he got, he had, you know, they said, you want to fight Seth Petruzzelli, who had weighed in the night before at 205 to fight on the undercard. And, uh, you know, he ended up weighing in at like 205.5. So, you know, now he's a heavyweight. Um, when I found out he was fighting Seth Petruzzelli, first I was thinking, whoa, what are you thinking? Elite XC, you guys are um, trying to. Trying to ward off or fend off bankruptcy. You've got your money train, potentially, you know, Kimbo Slice. He's bringing in the fans. You know what I mean? I mean, I know what, I know, I figure they had to go with Kimbo Slice regardless of what was going on. If Kimbo Slice wasn't fighting, a lot of guys weren't going to watch. If people weren't going to watch, they were going to be, you know, extinct anyways after this event. So it's kind of like saving your star for overtime, but you're down in the fourth quarter. You can't say, you know, sit on the bench, and if we make it to the fourth quarter, you're coming out here and you're doing your thing. Because you might not see the fourth quarter. So they went with a gamble. They put Kimbo Slice up against a guy that is not all that great, but he definitely is better than Kimbo all around. Um, What I was, you know, surprised about was... How weak that chin is. Whoa. Seth Petruzzelli threw a cheesy push kick. Was still on one foot. Leaning backwards. Okay, leaning backwards. He wasn't even like this. He threw the push kick. Leaning backwards. And then threw a complete elbow uh, arm punch. Like a, like a Nick Diaz jab almost. And basically knocked Kimbo out. Now, I remember seeing the one video, and I'm going to talk about Kimbo's street fight video, when he was like, come on, hit me, hit me, in that one where he, like, busted the dude's eyeball up. Hit me, hit me, and he just stood there like, and the guy was like, crack, crack. And it, it looked like he took, you know, three solid hooks from this big dude. So I didn't really think that he had, you know, a chin uh, made of porcelain, but... Wow, it was a weak punch. And like I said, one leg leaning backwards, one leg in the air, leaning backwards and all arm punch. Anyways, y'all, um, Kimbo Slice, you know what I mean? He, he lost his first fight. Should we all be surprised? No. Um, I was surprised how it happened and when it happened. I'm surprised why it happened, you know, because it didn't have to happen like this for Elite XC. This is not good for Elite XC. This is not good for business at all. You can see uh, Jared Shaw. Uh, Jared Shaw, I think it's Jared Shaw or his son or whoever the dude is. 
he's in the back of the head, ah, he's in the back of the head, like, he wanted that stopped, he was like, we can't have this, I don't care what it was, he was like, no, no, he was going crazy, sitting beside, uh, sitting beside, uh, Hulk Hogan and like a girl that Hulk Hogan's dating that looks exactly like his daughter. Come on now, you can't date somebody that looks like your daughter. You can't have sex with somebody that looks like your, your child. That ain't cool, brother. Um. Anyways, where where does Kimbo go from here? Um, to another organization. Elite XC is probably they might might have one more fight uh, card left in them. I hope they do. I hope they have one more card, and I want them to put, like, the next fight card, they will, like, have to pull out all the stops. They will say, man, you know, everything we have, put it on this card. Like, Gina Cron over Cyborg, put it on the card. You know what I mean? Bring this other dude in and have him fight this guy. Nick Diaz, you know, like, he's going to fight Eddie Alvarez, by the way. Which is an amazing fight. I'm definitely going to be doing a preview on that. It's not going to be on TV. It's like for November 10th. Hmm. Is that fight. Is that even going to happen now? Ah. Damn. Damn. Eddie Alvarez man. That dude's a beast. He can take a punch. He's a good wrestler. All that is good stuff. Uh, And Nick Diaz likes to throw punches. Like this is going to be a stand up battle. And Nick Diaz probably. We'll have to talk about that later. But anyways. Elite XC is out the door right now, and they have one, like, they're, they're like, out cold, and they have one more punch to try and at least, you know, do something, and, and if they do this next fight, if, if they get this next card off, it's going to be an amazing card, because they're going to pull out the stops. Anybody you think they might have been protecting, anybody that, you know, they're going to they're gonna put it all on it, they're going to give everything they have. So I really want them to have at least one more card so I can see a few things go down. Anyway, Seth Petruzzelli, where does he go from here? I mean, we all knew the dude was, uh, you know, he was on the Ultimate Fighter, you know. He, he's got a pretty half-decent record. He, he's a light heavyweight. On the Ultimate Fighter, he was there for the uh, heavyweight division. Um, where does he go from here? I don't know. Maybe depends on how much fame he potentially gets from this uh from this fight, um, he's definitely just gonna keep fighting. You know what I mean? He's his stock definitely went up. You know, the man who knocked out the YouTube sensation Kimbo Slice, Seth. What's his name? Seth So and So Pe- Petrozelli is here at this card or whatever. Seth Petrozelli gonna handle his business somewhere else. Um. I don't know, maybe like Petrozelli versus, um, what's that dude's name? The most upset man in the world, Brett Rogers. Brett Rogers was begging for this fight. Begging, like, please let me fight Kimbo. Really, they could have called Brett Rogers up last night. Like, yo, man, you want to fight Kimbo? Here's your chance. With no, like, with no preparation, nothing. And he would have been like, hell yeah, and he would have took that fight. And he would have won. You know, it's not a surprise what happened last night. Kimbo will not beat any somewhat well-rounded young MMA fighter, period. Um, biggest thing I noticed, though, from the whole thing, you know, a lot of people wanted to see Kimbo lose. A lot of people wanted to see the hate. A lot of people hated. A lot of people were, were, were crying and, 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 and fasting and doing anything they could, praying to to little animals and the sun and the moon and whatever gods they believed in, please, please let let Kimbo Slice lose. He finally lost. It was going to happen. I don't know what they were worried about, what they were begging for. It's like praying for September. Like, please let September come. It's coming. Just wait. All you have to do is wait. Whether you pray, whether you say anything or not, September's coming. So you don't have to say, oh, wait till he loses. I'm going to show you. I'm going to prove it to you. You don't have to prove that you know, that September will be here. September's coming. You know what I mean? And and, and it came for Kimbo Slice. But what did he do? He lost. He woke up. He said, what happened? Oh, man, you got hit. You got beat up. Really? Oh, man, that sucks. He just took it like a man. Came out. You know, said, everybody cheer for Petrozelli. He said, you know, this is, it was a good fight. You know, I wasn't expecting it. Blah, 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 blah. 
really took it like a man, left the cage, handled his business, and went off again in defeat. Still, uh, you know, still respectful. Um, what do you want from the dude, man? He's in over his head in the game of MMA. Unless he can improve himself and he's trying to, he's in over his head. He's not a top. He's not a top 25 heavyweight. He's not a top 50 heavyweight. There are literally 50 guys out there, 50 random heavyweights that can beat him, and probably 50 random light heavyweights that can beat him, and then probably 30 middleweights that can beat him. You know what I mean? So he's in over his head. He was. They were putting the weight of a whole company on his back. He was doing his best to su- to support his family, to support a whole organization, um, and trying his best to, to to be an ambassador for MMA as good as he could be, um, you know, on network television. Anyways, enough of that. Kimbo lost. He was respectful about it. What you know, he's got no chin. Um, he'll probably be back. By the way, he reacted after the fight. It would make me believe that he's not going to quit. He's not going to say, I'm done with MMA. Um, a lot of guys in his situation would be. I'm here for as long as it's good. As soon as it's not good, as soon as I'm not going to get paid that kind of money I'm looking for, I'm out. The way he acted, it seems like he'll be back. All right. What else happened? <sighs> Jake Shields versus Paul Daly. I had uh, Jake Shields winning this by submission. Paul Daly had me a little bit scared. Um... Paul Daly, it, it, Jake Shields went for the armbar and missed it, and then Paul Daly reversed it. If Paul Daly would have done that earlier and kept landing those elbows, like you could tell the intent, the like, the like, the craving for pain that Paul Daly had in his it, with his elbows, and compared to uh, Jake Shields' punches, Jake Shields was like pop, pop, kind of like you know throwing these little soft stuff. Paul Daly was smiling, like, dude, it's not hurting me. He would, like, push on his hips and and leave his face open for for elbows, and he'd get elbowed up, and um, he wouldn't care because it just wasn't really phasing him. But it's a, it's it's mixed martial arts. You can't you can't uh, have a bad ground game or a, or or, or an, a below par ground game. Daly looked pretty good, you know, he kept uh, getting the guard back a few times, he looked like he had an idea, but sometimes he was laying straight flat out like a board with his legs straight, and and his hip escape was more of a, was just kind of like moving, you know, back more, but he wasn't getting his legs out, you know what I mean, and what he needed to do when he was trying to escape was create space so that he could get his knees in there, so that he could... Maybe get the guard back or maybe get out. But all he was doing was going like this, moving this way. That's all he was doing. He needed to move, get his legs in, you know what I mean? But his ground game is not what it needs to be. His ground game, regardless, isn't as good as Jake Shields. He got submitted. Pretty good fight. Pretty good fight. Um, Paul Daly, he ain't going to retire again. He'll be uh, fighting again, Um, potentially, most likely, against strikers, and, and he'll beat them. He's a good fighter. Jake Shields, he was talking a lot of foolishness. Uh, GSP, Aoki, all types of stuff. Based on last night's performance against Paul Daly, Jake Shields would get smashed against against uh, GSP. Um, and against a lot of other guys that he was talking a lot of doo-doo about. He's a great fighter. He's a champion. I commend him. But... Um, Aye. Just be more respectful, man. Don't talk so much. You're you're already good, Jake. You don't need to prove anything to anybody. Just continue to be good. I don't know. Maybe learn learn something from Kimbo. All right. Next fight. Andre Arlovski versus Roy Nelson. Um. The worst refing I have seen since Andre Arlovski versus Paudapano. In the Andre Olaski versus uh, Peda Pano fight in the UFC, Andre Olaski is in a heel hook attempt, and or a leg lock attempt by Jiu Jitsu dude, and he is trying to submit him. And Andre Olaski's only way out of this is to hammer fist down, bow, and he's hitting him straight up in the back of the head. And I think it was. Um, 
what's my man? Brother, brother, brother referee. Uh, man, mind blank. I'm not even going to worry about it. With He's, you know, black guy UFC with the dreads, you know, or the long hair, whatever it is. Anyways, that dude is saying, stop hitting him in the back of the head. I think it's him. I'm not sure. Stop hitting him in the back of the head. Don't hit him in the back of the head. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to warn you only one more time. And, and he keeps hitting him. And then he ends up knocking him out. From shots to the back of the head. All. All of them. Every single shot was to the back of the head. Every one. And he was being warned the entire time. Stop hitting him in the back of the head. No more shots to the back. This is your last chance. He actually said. This is your last chance. And then he got knocked out. And then he. Andre Olavsky victor. By TKO. Andre Olavsky's on the ground. Flat on his back. A, ju- a jujitsu. 200 and like 50, 60 pound. Brown belt. You're smothering him. Side mount. North south. Side mount. Side control. Switching it up. Arlowski's trying to get out. He's trying to get out. Um, Roy Nelson's not allowing it. He gets him in the Kimura lock. He Arlowski's trying. You know, keep it. Listen. He's got him in a Kimura lock, and in the middle of the Kimura attempt, and with Arlowski holding onto his leg to keep. His arm from being ripped off. Dude says. Advance your positions. I need you to advance your positions. Or I'm standing you up. Dude. He's trying to submit him. How. What do you want him to do? You know. What do you want him to do? The minute he lets go of that submission attempt. And the minute he takes. 0.45 seconds. He stands the fight up. And that's that. Would he have submitted Andre Olavsky? I don't think so. I don't think he would have. Would Andre Olavsky ended up doing what he did anyways? Yes, I think so. Um, Andre Olavsky looked awesome with the hands. Wow. He was fast. This dude is a big dude. He was fast. Um, his boxing was on point. Bow, 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 bow. He was looking like... I was like, oh, damn, this guy, uppercut. Uh, uh, uh. Ah, 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 ah. He was just, I was like, damn, Arlovsky is sick right now. Uh, Freddie Roach is handling his business with, with Arlovsky. I think he still would have won the fight. It just wouldn't have been in, you know, when it happened. Um, I, I can't stand shoddy reffing. Bad reffing is, is, is bad, especially when it's not uh, hard to do the right thing. It's easy to see when a guy is in a dominant ground position and working for submissions, it's easy. It's very easy to go to register what's going on. Oh, he's in a good position. Oh, he's trying to submit him. I'll let him do what he's doing. But for whatever reasons, I'm not going to say what, he de- he decided and thought, you know, he de- thought that it was uh, the right call to stand him up in the middle of going for submissions that's horrendous. That's the kind of stuff that, and I didn't want to say this, but uh, the Iron Ring. That's the kind of stuff you expect to see on the Iron Ring. Uh, and, and I and you did see on the Iron Ring, but I don't really count that because it wasn't sanctioned anyways. You know, dude in the middle of a head and arm choke and the guy says, stand it up. Anyways, Arlovsky's looking sick though. Arlovsky's looking good. Arlovsky Fedor, I'm feeling like, I don't know man, I'm feeling like I might want that fight now more than... Um, more than Barnett Fedor, just because, just because, I mean, you know what Barnett's going to bring, he's going to bring a, a ground game if he can get it to the ground, He he's more of a threat to Fedor, so maybe I'm still looking for Barnett, and I'm just kind of hyped on Arlovsky right now, because he's looked better than ever, he doesn't even look like old Arlovsky, he looks like the best Arlovsky that there's ever been, um, but, you know, Arlovsky's Arlovsky's definitely should be top five right now, I think, um, if he's not already. you got, like, Fedor, then Noguera, then, I'm going to say Barnett, then Couture, and then Arlovsky. That's it. All right, y'all. Um, Roy Nelson, what's he going to do? He's going to fight um, somewhere else again. You know, he's a free agent, basically. Um, well, he's with uh, he's with Affliction, which, by the way, was cool to kind of see all the Affliction around. It was definitely cool to see Fedor commercials on CBS. 
uh, to see the whole fight, the whole Tim Sylvia fight, the whole Fedor Tim Sylvia fight in a commercial, and like Fedor will return. I was like, damn, that's tight. And people, I, I introduced another buddy of mine to Fedor like on Saturday or Friday night, and I just showed him all the stuff. And, and yeah, man, people still don't know who this dude is. People need to know. Um, it was awesome though. Affliction, good work. You were selling your T-shirts, but you know, whatever, man. Push Fedor, push, push T-shirts, push, uh, push your, your your fight cards. Do whatever you need to do, man. Keep making it happen, cause I'm definitely happy with what Affliction is doing. All right, now. Um, up next, Gina Carano versus Kelly Cobald. What was Kelly Cobalt's deal with the whole ice grill in the ca- ice grill in the camera and how she had that go- that plastic gold that plastic gold colored um, chain um, with her weird hairdo? I'm not trying to disrespect her, but it looked like she's balding at the back and I don't know. She kind of I don't know, man. She kind of looked like a like a female version of Dan Henderson, you know. Um, just, you know, whatever. She came out. She gave it her all. I don't know why they have three-minute rounds. That's ridiculous. It's not necessary at all. Give them the five-minute rounds. It's stupid. I'm like, turn my head, and the, the round's over. I'm like, what happened? It's only been three minutes. Well, she tried to take down, and uh, that was uh, one-third of the round. Gina Carano looked good, and, uh, and her fight skills also. Um... She took care of it. She took care of the situation. I, I personally believe if she would have started with the regular side, you know, the regular Muay Thai kicks earlier in the fight, she probably could have finished it. She, but I think she was afraid of the takedown. Um, I think she didn't want to have to deal with, you know, maybe being caught with one leg up in the air, going for some kick, and all of a sudden, Cobalt rushes in, takes her down. Um, it was a good fight. Cobalt... Um, you're not gonna see her back in the in the lead XC if you ever see a lead XC. Um, she came in, she she did her job. She tried to take out uh, Gina Carano. She couldn't, and thank you very much. You know what I mean? You might see her somewhere else. I don't know if you actually see her because that's not, that somewhere else isn't really gonna be on TV. Um, or like it's not like she's gonna be fighting in Dream or anything like that. Um, Gina Carano, what's next for her? I hope I hope the best fight. Right now, which is Gina Carano versus uh, Christine Cyborg Santos. Make it happen, y'all. Make that happen. Um, good fight, though. It was a good fight. And last, uh, well, second last, kind of. On the main card, last but not least, Marillo uh, uh, Rua, um, a.k.a. Ninja versus Benji Raddick. Uh, damn, man. I really wanted uh, Ninja to take this fight. Um, they basically were both knocked out at one point in the fight. They both, they were going crazy, which is what I believe, uh, Ninja's problem is, is he doesn't fight composed like he could. He's, he's got good ground game. He's got some half, he's got some pretty good stand up. Um, definitely far better than average, but he just goes crazy. It's kind of like, it's kind of like he, I don't know. I don't know why he just decides to just go ape. He needs to calm down, calm down the striking, you know, be crisp. You have the ability, you know what I mean? But uh, they hit each other, bam, knocked each other down, and were both out. And when I say out, I mean like this close from being a double KO. And they kind of just both were like, oh, God, where am I? And just kind of fell on each other and then woke up and then went back to their thing. Um, It was a pretty good fight. Um... I wish, though, it would have went another way. It didn't. Benji Raddick got a good win. Um, he looked all right. Um, I mean, he looked better than normal. And uh, Ninja looked um, not as good as I would have wished he would have looked. But, uh, yeah, I had a Ninja win in this fight. Tough, tough. Benji Raddick, congratulations. Good fight. Um you know, Benji will be fighting again. Maybe, uh, you know, he's closer to Robbie Lawler or something like that for that title. Who knows? 
Um, Ninja, you know, he's probably going to fight, you know, somebody else that's going to come at him, and he's probably going to beat him. The thing about Ninja is he, in his career, he loses to the best guys. But a lot of the times, the best guys are, like, real big guys. Like, he lost to Kevin Randleman, um, but Kevin Randleman is a heavyweight at natural weight. He lost to, well, he actually beat, but still lost, according to the stats, to Quentin Rampage Jackson. He's uh, fighting at 185 right now. Back in that time, he was fighting at like 205 or whatever or not. But the point is, he's comfortable out of 185 weight class. And I believe that that's his natural weight, 185. So a lot of the fights where he was losing to the top guys in the world, he was fighting above. He was fighting above his weight class, his natural weight class. Anyways. We'll see what happens with dude uh, with Ninja in the future. Benji Raddick, congratulations. Keep moving forward to the both of you. Um, overall, the card, the main card, the televised portion of the card, not too impressive, to be completely honest. Um, I don't know what it was. The the Corano Cobalt fight was pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, but you know, left more to be desired. Um, Arlovsky versus um, Nelson. I was like, why, you know, just because of the stand-up, I still believe the same thing would have happened. I still believe Arlovsky would have won with strikes. I still believe he would have knocked him out. Um, but it kind of messed that up for me because of that cheesy-ass stand-up. Jake Shields versus Daly. Again, something that was to be desired. And Petrozelli versus Kimbo. There's not many times that a 14-second uh, fight can ever be impressive. Um, I mean, you need at least 30 seconds to be impressive. Fedor, his wins over Tim Sylvia and Zulu, impressive. You got a minute, you know, um, Anderson Silva over, um, Irvin. Um, you know, what's that dude? Uh, Anthony Johnson over Tommy Spear, you know, like 50 seconds. Like, that's when you can get a fast ass whooping that's really impressive. Like, oh man. Pop, 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 uppercut, 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 hook, 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 knee, out. You're like, oh, damn, that was amazing. But, um, actually, my, my, I look all right, I think. I think I should start like, yeah, yeah, I'm my analyst. I'm going to start fighting. Yeah, I got to get in shape, though. Not circle. But anyways, undercard real quick. Santos took handled business. Y'all got to see this fight. She put down uh, a beat down like cr cr uh, wow, a crazy beat down. To be completely honest, it was it was until the third round which they both kind of slowed down. I mean, she definitely handled the business. Takahashi can take a beating. She took straight flush Muay Thai head kicks or like crack and just stood there. Takahashi also had this cool little image going. It was a good fight. Um, again, overall, the night was so-so. I give it maybe a 6.5 to a 7 out of 10. Um, maybe a little harsh, but that's the way I see it. I'll be back. Um, actually, I, I got to do my preview for uh, for this Saturday, October 10th. Um, something's happening in UFC something, I think. There should be. But, uh, yeah, man. Oh, got to give a quick shout-out. I got my two shirts. Uh, check out the Pain Factory, y'all. Thepainfactory.com. They got some nice gear. They got a little thing on the back. I can't really show it. It says, from the, from the cradle to the cage. Uh, check it out, thepainfactory.com. And, um, damn, y'all, MMA. It's important. Peace.